Okay, good morning again. Uh, this is the second video in the series for MA Teaching Opportunity Program. And uh, in last video, we discussed about the centroids of composite areas. And in this particular video, we are going to discuss about moment of inertia and parallaxis here. So let's go to the board here. Moment of inertia. A moment of inertia of any object is basically its second moment of area about a specified axis. So for example, if we have a coordinate system, let's say x, y, with origin located here, uh, and suppose we have an arbitrary shaped object, and we are the problem is to find moment of inertia of this object about x-axis and about y-axis. So in order to do so, we select a small differential area, which is dA, and this area is located at distance x and uh, at distance y with respect to the origin. Again, we want to find the moment of inertia of this entire body or of this entire shape or entire area, but we are going to start with finding moment of inertia of this small differential area about x-axis and y-axis. It is given by d of rx to be y square into dA, which is moment of inertia of this differential area about x-axis, so dIx denotes that, and it is given by y square dA, which is square of its distance from x-axis, y square, into dA. And similarly, moment of inertia of the same area about y-axis denoted by diy is given by x square into dA. So this is moment of inertia of the differential area. But in order to find moment of inertia of the entire area, what we are going to do is we are just going to integrate this area dix, or sorry, moment of inertia dix over the entire area. And similarly for iy, it is going to be integration over the same area of diy. So this integration becomes integration of y squared dA. And this becomes integration of x squared dA. So these are the two formulae in order to find moment of inertia of this body about x-axis and about y-axis. Looking at this equation here, we have square of a distance, square of distance y and square of distance x, multiplied by the area. Therefore, the unit of moment of inertia is either mm fourth or meter fourth if you are using metric system or inch fourth and feet fourth if you are using US customer units. Again, one of the important things to notice here is we have square of the distances. So even if the distances are negative or if this body is uh, in the negative x-axis or in some other quadrant, these distances are getting square. Therefore, these two quantities, moment of inertia Rx and Iy are always positive. So this is very important to know. You cannot have a negative moment of inertia. Then let's go back to the document camera where I'm going to show you moments of inertias of some standard shapes. And here you can see the first is moment of inertia of rectangle about x prime axis, which is the centroidal axis, and x axis which passes through the base of the rectangle. And you can see that you can also have moment of inertia about the y prime axis or y axis. And all of these quantities are shown in this table. Uh, for most of the standard shapes, like rectangle, triangle, circle, semicircle, or even quarter circle, these moments of inertia are readily available to you. Uh, by considering the example of rectangle as shown here, I want to uh, emphasize an important concept Let's go back to the board here. Uh, let us consider this rectangle 
I don't know if yeah, it is visible clearly. Uh, and this is its centroidal axis. Let's denote this as I C E N. C E N stands for centroid. This is the y axis. And let us consider this axis passing through base as base. So if you go back and look at the formulas for a moment of inertia of this rectangle of width b and height h, then moment of inertia of the rectangle about centroidal axis is given by b h cube over 12, whereas moment of inertia of the same rectangle, remember we are dealing with the same rectangle, but we are writing its moment of inertia with respect to other axis which passes through the base of rectangle. And this happens to be bh cube over 3. So clearly, I C E N, which is moment of inertia of the rectangle about central axis is less than its moment of inertia about the base axis. So this is a very, very important concept, uh, which says that moment of inertia of any object, if you come back to this object here, and let's say this is the centroid of this area, and this is the axis which passes through the centroid, so I C E N, then it says that any body has its minimum, or any body has its smallest moment of inertia about an axis which passes through the centroid. Therefore, I C E N, moment of inertia about centroid, is smallest. Okay? This concept is going to be very useful when we, uh, when we actually go and start looking into the concepts of parallel axis theorem. So these are the formula for moment of inertia. Uh, I gave you example of this moment of inertia for simple rectangular shape for which we have a standard formula available for its moment of inertia about centroid or its moment of inertia about some other axis. Now let's uh, discuss parallel axis theorem and we are going to move to this board now. So parallel axis theorem is a theorem which, which basically allows us to find moment of inertia of any object, let's again consider a case of rectangle, and let's say that this is the centroidal axis. In most of the cases, we are in most of the cases for all the standard shapes, we know moment of inertia about the centroidal axis. So let us say that we know this this value here, which is bh cube over 12. So. If a problem asks us to find a moment of inertia about some arbitrary, arbitrary axis, let's consider this axis, which passes through the top of the rectangle. Then the question is, if we know I, I about centroid, moment of inertia of this rectangle about centroid, can we find moment of inertia about an axis which passes through the top surface? We know that the equation for moment of inertia is integration of y square dA. But by using parallel axis theorem, we can avoid this integration process and we can get moment of inertia about an axis passing through the top surface pretty easily. So what problem says, or what parallel axis theorem states is, if you want to find moment of inertia about an axis passing through the top surface, then it is given by moment of inertia about the centroid, which is generally known to us for standard shapes, plus A times D square. So as I explained in the, uh, as I explained on the other slide that I C E N is the smallest, 
this plus sign here makes more sense because we are trying to find a moment of inertia about an axis which is other than the centroidal axis. So since centroidal axis has minimum, mo minimum moment of inertia, we had to add something to get moment of inertia about an axis uh, passing through the top surface. Uh, here, term D is called as a transfer term. transfer term, which basically uh, is the distance between the two parallel axes. Because we know moment of inertia about the central axis, and we want to transfer this moment of inertia to an to other axis which passes through top surface. That is why it's called as a transfer term. And it basically the distance between the two parallel axes. And A is the area of rectangle which is, OK, I did not put, uh, put the dimensions of rectangle, so it has same dimensions as B. And H is the height. So let's start uh, to plug in the numbers. We want to find moment of inertia about an axis which passes through the top surface. We started with a. We started with the fact that we know moment of inertia about the centroid, so it is bh cube over 12. Again, you can find this into the book. And we have plus sign because I centroid is smallest, so we had to add something. We are going to add first is area, which is b into h, which is area of rectangle, and square of the transfer term. So transfer term is d. In this particular case, since this is a centroidal axis, this distance d is half of the total height, which is h by 2 and square of it. So basically, if you simplify this, you will get bh cube over 12 plus b into h square over 4. So this is i top. And let's go and write the final result here as I top to be bh cube over 3. If you solve this, you'll get bh cube over 3. Again, remember one of the important concept that I wanted to emphasize can be easily seen here that I top, moment of inertia about any axis which is not centroidal axis, is greater, bh cube over 3 is greater than moment of inertia about centroid, which is bh cube over 12. So this is the definition or the statement or the formula when we want to use parallel axis theorem. Now in order to uh, generalize this formula, we can say that if I want to find moment of inertia of any object about an x prime axis, which is not central axis, then we can do so by knowing its moment of inertia about the central axis. And by knowing distance d, which is the distance between the two parallel axes, x prime and x. And a is the area of object. If you simplify it, i x is i x prime minus a d square. So in case if you don't know moment of inertia about the centroid, let's, let me write centroidal. If you don't know moment of inertia about the centroid, but you know if you know it about some other axis, then you have to basically subtract term a d square. So these are the two formulae that you need to know in order to apply parallel axis theorem. Okay, so in this particular uh, video, we discussed about a moment of inertia and a parallel axis theorem. One of the basic questions that I didn't answer is why do we even need to worry about parallel axis, uh, why do we even need to worry about moment of inertia? And the importance of moment of inertia can be seen in the equation for bending stress, which is sigma is equal to mc over i. So what are moment of inertia that we calculate about the centroid goes in this particular formula here. 
So this is the story of moment of inertia and parallaxis theorem. In the next segment of videos, uh, I will solve a couple of problems which will incorporate these formulas that we discussed now. Okay? Thank you.